Hey guys, just to let you know, um, for this recording, I was expecting to have to do a grinding montage, and I forgot to turn back on the system audio, which means that the game audio did not record. Um, I'm probably just going to throw in a extended soundtrack to any Pokemon thing I could find that kind of fits, I don't know. I hope you can forgive me for this little mishap, and I promise that it won't happen again. Hopefully. So, I hope you guys enjoy the video for today, and let's get started. Hey guys, what is up? It's the Ghastly Gengar here today with some Pokemon Glaze. Last time we left off, we finally made it to Darkwood Town. I totally didn't forget the name, and we just walked around, kind of just did our own thing. In today's episode, we are going to check out the gym to see if we need to train for it. Um, so, let's do that. So, as I suspected, this gym is all fighting type Pokemon. So I'm going to lead with Kaiba, with Grapes close second, Spectre in third, and so on and so forth. Um, so let's see what level these guys are at. And he is level 40. Huh. Alright. So, one thing I wanted to talk about was, I probably would have slept in for another hour or two, to be honest, today, and not record this till like 3 or 4 in the afternoon, and my phone was just blowing up with uh, notifications, and I look at it, and Lord Chuckleton's like, hey man, uh, there's, a, uh, there's a package at your door, you, you should go check that out, I'm like, what? So I went downstairs, looked in the front porch, there wasn't a package, got in my kitchen, there was a package sitting there, and I was like, what do you do this time? God, what the fuck did he do this time? So I grabbed the package, and I just kind of ran back into my room, I opened it, that's not where I wanted to go, and it is a, it was a unopened copy of Persona Q, um, with the set number two of Tyro cards, Tyrot. Tyro, and I was like, damn, the fuck, dude. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to playing that after this recording. Um, I have my DS sitting to the side, I actually sat and downloaded the uh, free DLC that they had on there, which was two free personas. Um, I'm thinking if maybe I should try to get some cash so I, I can buy the extra personas on there, like they have uh, a special mode of Izanagi, or... If, if you know the game, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you're probably thinking of speaking gibberish. But, basically, Persona is about a little... Persona 3, 1, 2, 3, and 4, I don't know about 1 and 2 so much, because I only played a little bit of them, and I thought they were kind of trash. But, Persona is about a game of teenagers who find out that they have special powers, um, and three, you find out that you have a special power by using this thing called, I think, an invoker, which is oddly shaped like a frickin' pistol. And the characters put the invoker to the head and pull the trigger, and that releases their persona. Um, the persona is like their inner demons, but they can control them. Um, in Persona 2, um, oh no, Persona f I'm trying to explain this as best as I can, it's really hard, because Persona is a really complicated game. Um, in Persona 4, you find out, for after having a wacky dream, that the main character can go into a television and go into this weird realm where he has to investigate the deaths of many people around the town from something called the Midnight Channel, where as soon as they appear in the Midnight Channel, the next day it rains, they come up dead. So you're trying to prevent that from happening, and in Persona 4, you you summon your Persona by like crushing Tyro cards that relate to the certain like thing that they're related to, like the sun, the moon, the fool, you know. And it's just kind of it's just a cool concept in general for a game, but I like it in Persona 4 because in an aspect they never showed in Persona 3 was in Persona 4, people who get their Personas have to confront their inner, demon, like inner demons first before actually getting their abilities. 
which some may be that they can't come to terms with how people really think of them, or how they hide their true emotions from everyone, or how they want to be just a real person. Like, it, it's a really good game, it gets really touchy-feely at some times, and I really love it. Um, if you haven't played a Persona game, I highly recommend starting off with Persona 4. It's more laid back than 3 and less, like, aggressive with the story and seriousness. Though it does have its moments, and it will probably make you tear up a little bit in certain points in the game. I'd also like to point out that it's been 5 minutes into Pokemon, and I have only talked about Persona. I just really love these games, like... Persona 3 I haven't beaten, and it's because it's on the PSP and I really don't know if I should continue playing it on there, because it just... The PSP is... My PSP, in general, is just not good. Like, the trigger is missing, the screen kind of pulls off and stuff like that. So I might get... I might try to get a new one, I'm not... I'm not 100% sure on that. But, again, I also have a PSP emulator, so I can just play it on there. Um, not to mention that I also now have access to the PlayStation 3 version, so I was thinking maybe I should just start the game over again since it's been so long that I played. Um, but Persona 3 is a little bit more easier to handle, but it has a harder hitting story that, and it doesn't have a version that you could just play where it has a bunch of the features Persona 4 Golden has, which is on the PS Vita. Which is a good system, it's just there's no games for it. In Persona 4 Golden, you have the animated cutscenes, and you have fast traveling from place to place. If you want to play the PlayStation 3 or the play PSP version of Persona 3, you have to choose one over the other. You can either choose for faster accessibility and, like, just easier way to go, lack of character, and more of a point-and-click kind of style game. Or in Persona 3 on the PR PlayStation 3, you can play a kind of older dated version that doesn't have just as many personas and not final or more finished off, but you have that more interactivity where you can play around, run around as your character and stuff, and then just feel more immersed into the game. I'm not saying that you won't feel immersed if you play the Persona 3 uh, per portable version, but it's just kind of. It wasn't really given a good, like, way to pick it up and just play it. If you... I'm, I'm trying to explain this as best as I can. Like, I didn't expect to be talking about Persona Q this morning. I was expecting to be talking about BoJack Horseman, actually. Because I watched that last night, and that... Season 3 of BoJack Horseman is... amazing. It took so many unexpected turns, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but... It's just a good show overall. Like, in the top, like, five episode or, like, animated cart, like, shows that I like to watch, Bojack Horseman and Steven Universe are basically almost tied for one and two. Um, if you don't know, Steven Universe is kind of a series. If you watch the first few episodes, you probably don't feel this way because the first few episodes were a bit derpy. But, on s the first few episodes of uh, Steven Universe is kind of that show that you want to watch when you want to feel good or cry about something good. Where Bojack Horseman just makes you realize on your inner demons and just stuff you don't usually like to talk about and stuff you don't want to confront about yourself. But eventually you will have to come to terms with it in order to make your life better. Which is kind of... It's kind of the show that gave me inspiration to try to make my life a better thing than it already was. Like... I cut ties off with of people that I knew were bad for me. Um, I stopped doing what made me not happy, which is why I made this new channel, because it's something I wanted to do. And it's been working really well for me, actually. I've been a lot less stressed, I've noticed. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how normal it is, but, like, I, I just have anxiety hardcore when something doesn't go right. And it used to happen all the time. Like, anytime there was something planned and something, like, if a friend said they were going to pick me up in, like, five minutes and they were here in six, I would have a panic attack after, like, at the five-minute mark. You know, I was kind of that kind of person, because I just don't like having things go wrong. Like, uh, 
There was one time where it, we were having flash floods in my town, and I had to have my mom pick, pick me and my friends up after it was like raining hardcore in the town we were playing Pokemon Go in. And I kept calling her and calling her and texting her, and she wasn't replying. And I just automatically assumed that she went into a car crash and she was really her, and that it was my fault because I had to go out and play Pokemon Go and just stuff like that. Like, it's the stuff you don't really like to talk about. It's stuff that you like to make pretend never happens just so that the convenience of other people is just met. You don't want to worry other people around you because you know that if they worry that they will try to get closer to you and getting closer means that you think you're going to hurt them. Um, Tyson, Chicken Nuggets, what's up? Hit, you made it all the way here. Not bad at all. But I'm the gym, I'm, a, I'm on the league of my own. I hope you're ready to face the toughest gym leader and to nod. You're about to battle him. Shit, boy. Um, I really hope this guy... That's, that's kind of a bland... Is that like a towel or something around his neck? It's, it's kind of a bland kind of like sprite. Um... Well, there have been a few other bland sprites in the game, but, I mean, the guy made a good game. That's as much as, that's as much, that's as far as anyone wants to go, really, for them, uh, when it comes to making games. Um, Lucario is fighting Steel, so I'm gonna go into Wukong. So, I, I don't know if anyone's mad that I used the same team basically throughout the whole game. Um, like, I, I usually do this for most Pokemon games. I just pick a team that I like and I stick with it. I, I don't really switch out variables much unless I'm going to a specific gym I know I'm a, I have a specific weakness for. Like, stuff like that. Let's go Spectre! And if you don't know where Spectre's name comes from, um... Basically, I made it up on the spot because it fit as a ghost, but shortly after I started, uh, like, what was it called? Associating it. I started associating it with, uh, Kamen Rider's Ghost, if you haven't watched it. It's a really good action Japanese show. Um, I think that's the genre that they call them, like, live, a like, live action Japanese, like, shows. Um, it's basically like Power Rangers, except a lot more serious when it comes to the topics, like, uh, just all around. But, then again, if you watch the, um, what are they called? Super Sentai shows. Um, they're basically the original versions of Power Rangers, except for the fighting scenes aren't dubbed over like they normally are in, like, Power Rangers, uh... Why did I switch out to you? Like, Power Rangers that we know is just, they take, like, regular, like, people, and they just put them in just, like, it might be more from Power Rangers, the teenagers, they were all doing their own thing, that was 100% American right there, but as soon as the fighting scenes kicked in with them as the Rangers and them in the, like, Megazords, that was all Japanese footage right there, and no one even knew. Well, a lot of people knew, but just a lot of people also didn't know that that was what's going on. Like, until I started watching Kamen Rider, no one knew until I told them that Power Rangers never even used, like, their own footage, basically. Well, they did, but not for the good parts. Oh, shit, we just beat the gym while I was babbling on about Power Rangers and Bojack Horseman. I, I can't believe it. I was the greatest challenge the league had to offer, but you beat me without breaking a sweat. I'd be honored to give you the badge. If you are the greatest threat this league has, then why aren't you the champion? The clobber badge. The clobber badge allows you to use a move waterfall inside of battle. It also lets you gain entrance into the Tunad League, not to mention it makes you look damn awesome. Here, take this too as a gift for me. Um. That contains Focus Punch. It's a mighty move that only hits if you're not hit while charging. It'd be extremely effective if used correctly. What now? Well, it's time to challenge the Tanad League. Head west out of town and don't stop till you reach the big building with the green roof. I have faith in you, kid. Wow, that was... The episode's... Oh my god. So I noticed that when it comes to po playing Pokemon, I don't usually talk about... 
Like, I don't usually t actually talk about, like, what is it? what's going on in the game. I just kind of notice it, acknowledge it, and then just kind of move on. Um, it's mostly because I don't know what to really talk about when it comes to this. Also, I'm gonna buy, or uh, buy, I'm gonna catch a new water Pokemon because, uh, I, I just really need to stop teaching Swampert all those HMs. Oh, uh, there's really something I can do. I don't know how I could approach these. I think it's weird that Weasel looks more like a boyish Pokemon, and then when you get a Floatzel, it looks like a female. But depending on the- like, it doesn't change depending on the gender either. It's just always like the first stage looks kind of more male, and the second is more female. I don't know if I can teach Tentacle Waterfall. Yeah, I'm gonna do this water type, and that'd be pretty stupid if it couldn't. Not. No. I was gonna name it not hentai, but no works too. Right. Let's see if No can learn some stuff. Move Pokemon. Um, oh shit, that's what I forgot to do. I forgot to also look up a, uh, where the move tutor was. So, let's learn Surf. Waterfall. You should have actually done this a lot, like, sooner. And Dive. Alright, so I'm not putting him on the team roster. I explained this last episode why I was doing stuff like this. Um, he's basically just a, re a way for me to get around. I'm not acknowledging him as a team member. He's not actually a team member. So I, th I don't know if the league's up here or what. Tell me there's nothing up here. The only person in Pokemon that actually has a sense of fucking logic. He's not even in an official game. Like, there's, there, there could be a lot easier ways to get up mountains. Is this like Victory Road? Or is Victory Road Victory Road? Old Amber. <gasps> I can get Aerodactyl! That is a kind of weird placement for Old Amber, though. Um, I don't know how hard the two nods, the two nod lead's gonna be, to be honest. Also, I really like Water type. That isn't tentacle. I would honestly would have preferred a Slowpoke. Hey, have you? I badges too. Then you're my opponent. Then that's not how stuff works. Right, good thing we at least got Wukong. Didn't mean to cut you. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, I always underestimate Rock Smash. Like, I've never, honestly, I've never used Rock... I've never used Rock Smash in, like, basically any Pokemon as an actual attacking move, and I kinda wanted that. Not that. You're not you're not Pidgeotto. So it looks like we're take a close look at the world map. Wow, we're almost there. Right. 
I'm just, I guess I'm gonna get past this guy and whatever is up, like, after that. Why did I think that would work? Um... I'm still pretty sure that Conkledur's cry is actually... Uh, just unknown. So I'm guessing there's no unknown in this game. Like, I really like Weasel as a Pokemon, but its evolution just makes me feel like the kind of, like, it's just one-sided to the female gender. It's kind of like Machop, uh, Machop and Machamp and all those when they're female. Or, uh, just stuff like that in general. Like, oh, what was, I think you could, there's like some Pokemon, I believe it's like, I don't remember exactly which Pokemon it was, but I know some are like, it could be a male or female before it evolves, but when it evolves, it is only female or male. Oh yeah, I was gonna give it to you. Actually... Yeah, I'll give him that. Um, if I switch out to Arcanine for him... Oh! Where are we? I don't think we were supposed to go this way. Ooh! It's heat. Is grab- is that- is this like- a place for ground on? Am I not supposed to be here yet? I guess there's nothing here for me. Guess I'll have to come back later. Well, I, at least now we know if we need a Magby or an Arcadine where to go. I'm exhausted, but I made it to the check gate, just another step closer to the league. Alright, we made it this far. Um. Alright guys, so we're gonna leave it off here. Um. Wait, what? Will you trade a giraffe rig for my Cedra? Maybe? Sorry. I'll grab this one more. I didn't even realize that in-game trades were in this game, but... Now that we're here, we only have a little bit more episodes to go until we have at least a break in this series, or... I don't know. I still don't know what I'm gonna do with it, to be honest. Uh, I... Still didn't even know this was like a two-parter game until, uh... Actually, I think I knew it from the beginning, but I just kind of forgot in the middle. Well, we're almost at the end of the Tunod League. Well, we're almost to the Tunod League, should I say. And, yeah, this has been kind of a journey. Um, if you like, or, it, what I was saying is, in between the videos, I'm gonna go find that move tutor or deleter or whatever, and go fix my move sets, and then just go around with, uh, like, a not official member of the team. And, yeah. But if you like the video, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, question of the day: How far do you expect? How well do you expect me to do the Tunod League? Or is there something that I should go back and do? Just yeah. Is there anything I should go back for? Is there anything I should try to do? Is there a legendary I could have gotten? You know. Um. So yeah. Until next time. Hope you all have a great day and. Bye-bye.